Isaac Newton is a towering figure in science, but a little-known aspect of his legacy is that of a historian. Newton's Chronology of Ancient Kingdoms Amended, published in 1728, one year after his death, unleashed a storm of controversy. The book presented a drastically revised timeline for ancient civilizations, contracting Greek history by 500 years and Egypt's by a millennium. This is the topic of Newton and the Origin of Civilization by the historians Jed Buchwald and Mordecai Feingold. Their book tells the story of how one of the most celebrated figures in the history of mathematics, optics and mechanics came to apply his unique ways of thinking to problems of history. For Science Weekly, Alok Jar met up with Jed and Mordecai and started out by asking them how big a part of Newton's life was his work as a historian. Well, it was actually quite big. I mean, he spent a considerable amount of time doing what we would call historical studies. And as I said, over more than four decades doing that, he left behind hundreds of thousands of words devoted to historical studies. And uh, as we investigated it, we realized that he applied the same criteria, criteria of rigor and evidence to the historical studies as he did to alchemical and mechanical or optical. So uh, he was rigorous and serious in everything he did. Um, and it's just, it, that's one of the things that we found quite amazing, how consistent he was in his determination to pursue uh, evidence wherever it led, albeit with a certain agenda in mind. Now, Jed, um, he, uh, uh, New Newton was a, a great astronomer amongst many other things as well, as we've discussed. How did he use that to construct this, this chronology? Well, <clears throat> strictly speaking, he's not an astronomer. That is, um, when he was young, he did do some observations, but nothing beyond that. He's a calculator. Um, but... Um, Usually when you think about Newton, you think about mathematics, you think about the calculus, uh, you think about light. You know, he had a particle theory of light. He discovered uh, that white light is made up out of colors and so on. But uh, you put yourself back in the 17th century, you have to imagine that this is a period of time in which the very idea of what you do in an experiment and how you handle measurements is new. Not many people are doing it. And uh, when he was very young, very young at Cambridge, um, he developed uh, novel ways of handling measurements. So, for example, if I were to take a ruler and put it on a piece of paper and uh, ask you to measure the length of a line, and I ask you to do it 10 times, you're going to get 10 different numbers. So what do we do with those numbers today? Well, scientists today, since the last part of the 18th century, use statistics to figure out what the best result would be. You'd average them out. You'd average it. Uh, in the 17th century, you don't do that because if you were to print a paper with 10 different numbers on it, they would have thought you were incompetent. You had to write down the best number that you could get. But Newton, very early on, is the first one who doesn't operate like that. His skepticism of what uh, the human senses are capable of producing was so profound that he decided early on to put together all of these bad numbers, each one of which was inherently terrible, and out of those to sort of forge a new number. And that way of working passed over into um, the chronology, and it did so in the, in the following way. So how are you going to redate the past? Well, you have data from the past, but the data is words. The words come down um, from a commentary written by an ancient astronomer, a famous one named Hipparchus. Uh, many people have heard of Hipparchus. It's the only thing we have from him. He wrote a commentary on a poem, a poem that was written for um, Greek and Roman gentlemen. Talked about the heavens, where the constellations are, and it says things like, a certain feature of the heavens passed through a certain constellation. Now, what he did, what Newton did was, um, he would take that and try to transform it into a number. And to do that, you had to make decisions about what stars were involved and so on, and then apply pretty extensive uh, computational techniques. And so what he did out of that was he had 10 numbers in two sets of five each. And what's particularly interesting about that, without going into any detail, is one set of numbers uh, was inherently more accurate than the other set. So 
keeping the data completely separate. He put the two separately together and forged a single result out of that. And the result of that was to redate the Trojan War by hundreds of years, pushing it forward to uh, um, around, uh, well, to post-930 BCE. And that was a gigantically controversial result. I mean, that puts lots of civilizations in contact, out of contact, all sorts of things there. I mean, how was that work received? How was something like that? It's quite a major change to the historical record. How was it received by his contemporaries at the time? Well, uh, the chronology turned out to be his most controversial work in the 18th century, even more than the Principia, partly, of course, because it was written uh, without numbers. I mean, Newton uh, left most of the calculation in manuscripts, but it was also much more accessible than the very, very difficult Principia, but partly because it mattered more than the Principia. I mean, chronology was inherently uh, a subject matter associated with theology, and everybody cared about uh, ancient history. Newton, like anybody else at the time, believed that the scripture is the most reliable ancient history that you could get. So if you uh, redate the past, cutting 500 years from Greek history, 1,200 years from Egyptian history, and you... Uh, 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 seem to contradict in certain aspects scripture. For example, if Newton argues that uh, letters and astronomy was invented only around Solomon's time, what do you do with a biblical uh, scripture telling you that Moses, 500 years earlier, were in possession of all the knowledge of the Egyptians? So some aspects of Newton's chronology did not only change pagan history, but it had immediate relevance uh, for, for theology. So uh, in England, uh, quite a few people, of course, uh, were quite happy with the theology, uh, with the chronology, but many objected uh, for various reasons. Are any of his ideas and methods still relevant to the way people construct these sorts of chronologies today. I mean, it's, it's very, it seems from everything you said, incredibly difficult. And there's no reason why Virgil should have written accurate historical uh, information in his poem, because he was writing a story about a particular time which doesn't need a, a, a time. And he, uh, the, the, the point of any fictional narrative is, is that you can uh, change histories around to, to, to fit the story. So in a sense, uh, Newton and others would have been trying to uh, apply something which was never intended uh, on those texts. Uh, but, but is that method in any way valid in well, today? <clears throat> so that's a good question. Um, a few years ago, an archaeologist at uh, Cornell University, I think it was about six years ago, attempted on the basis of numerical measurements, I forget of exactly what, there were measurements of spreads of agriculture and so on, to redate the time at which the Minoan civilization on Santorini would have interacted with the uh, New Kingdom dynasty in Egypt, pushed it around by about 150 years. It was based on numerical data, right? <coughs> The Egyptologists reacted immediately. This is recent, saying, no, this is completely inconsistent with our textual data and other materials that we have at the same time. So there you have a kind of conflict today that's not dissimilar to the one you had from the past. I think um, the, the, the issue, in a certain sense, is this. Can you, as it were, incinerate all of human history in a kind of numerical furnace or not? I mean, do you throw out uh, the records of the past and so on uh, and replace them entirely with what, uh, in retrospect, can often be quite speculative but hard-looking numerical data? Um, I are the numbers king, basically? Are the numbers king or are they not? Now, I mean, I was trained as a physicist originally to think that, in fact, numbers are king. Of course, you see, Newton looked at all of that stuff and to the extent that he thought there was anything in it, he tried to, to map it to real people and real times. In other words, take the myth out of mythology.